Hey guys, it's me, Ari. If you're a first or second time guest, or if you're joining us online, we're super happy that you are here. There are some really neat ways to get connected. One is through our website at dtcchurch.com where you can learn about our church, watch past services, or keep updated on what's happening up next. You can also stay connected through any of our social media platforms. If you have any questions about anything you see or hear today, you can stop by our information center located in the lobby. If it's your first or your second time joining us here at DTC, take a quick moment and look for the connection card in front of you. We would love to get some information over to you about DTC Church and get you your free gift. You can also pull out your cell phone and text the word welcome to 956-431-0272. You're going to receive a link where you can fill out some information and it's that simple. Enjoy the service. Okay, I didn't think you could. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And so the movie First Man is about the, the, the many sacrifices that people made to make it possible for man to land on the moon. Now, when this happened, it, 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 you know, we, we had only invented flight, not even 50 years or about 50 years and, and now, you know, man was trying to get to the moon. But, but if you're familiar with the film, it is, it is talking about the sacrifices that many people made uh, to this significant moment in history. So the title of my message today is this, Great Triumphs Require Great Sacrifices. And that's one of the things that we see in, in this particular story. And so let me take you to the first clip that I want to show you today. And, and, and it's actually man. And just try to take yourself to this moment because man has never landed on the moon. They don't know how it's going to happen. They don't even know if it's going to work. They don't know if they're going to crash on the moon. And, and, and they, they don't know what's going to happen. But, but they've prepared as best as they can. And so take a look at this scene. You know, and again, the, the moment that follows that is, is Neil Armstrong placing the, the first human footprint on the surface of the moon. But, but just, you know, thinking about and watching that film and just the remarkable uh, sacrifices that had to be made. See, we remember the fact that man landed on the moon, but what we don't think about often is what needed to happen in order for them to get there. And for the entire decade of the 60s, uh, they were working diligently to get man on the moon. And it was, a, it, 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 was a, it was a significant journey. A lot of the men and women who contributed to this great accomplishment uh, have already died, but what they did has outlasted their life. You see, they left a legacy and made a difference that will never be forgotten. And in a similar way, as Christ followers, God has called us to leave a legacy. He's called us to live in such a way where we make a difference in the world that we live in today that is never forgotten. You know, God has called us to, to, to be the kind of people that, that leave something behind. And that we, live, that we leave our footprint during the time that we were here on this earth. Uh, listen to, in John chapter 15... Jesus is sharing some words with, with the, the, the believers. He's sharing some words with them, and he says to them, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches, and, 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 and if you hang around with me, if you stay close to me, he says, you're going to bear fruit, and that's going to please God. And then listen to what he says in, in verse 16. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Now listen to what that is saying. God says that, that you and I didn't choose God. We were, God was not the one that was lost. We were lost. God was not the one that needed to be found. We needed to be found. And so God says, he says, you didn't choose me. He says, I chose you. If, if you ever feel like, 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 if you ever feel down, if you ever feel discouraged, you ever feel rejected by people, just know that God has chosen you. You ever feel left out? Just know that God has chosen you. He is not, and then he says, he says, not only did I choose you, he says, but I have called you, I have appointed you to go and bear fruit. And then he says this. Watch, watch. This is the key thing. He says, I've called, to, 
I've called you to go and bear fruit. And this is the part that I want to focus on here today. He says fruit that will do what? That will last. Come on, you can put the scripture back on the screen. Fruit that will last. Think about that. that that's that's kind of interesting. Because, yeah, you, all can, you, you and I can relate with just fruit. You know, we buy fruit at the market or we pick it from a tree or we bring it home and and, and, and how many of you know that it, you only got so much time to eat that fruit, right? Because it, it, it's going to go bad. It's not going to last forever. However, God has called you and I, and he says that I've called you, I've chosen you, I have appointed you to go and bear fruit. He says, and the kind of fruit that I want you to bear, he says, is fruit that's going to last forever. And so just like the men who landed on the moon and the people who made the sacrifices to make that happen, that moment in history will never be forgotten. And the impact of that moment has, has moved on from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. And God has called us as Christ followers to, leave, to bear fruit that is going to last forever. He's called us to leave a significant imprint on this world. Wow, what a privilege. What an opportunity God has given us. An opportunity to, to make a difference by walking in love. See, when you walk in love, when you love others the way that God loves others, you know what you and I do? We bear fruit that will last. Fruit that will last. And so fruit, that, fruit means that you will leave a legacy in this life and also into eternity. And so I want to talk to you real quickly about how to bear fruit that will last. I want to show you how to, uh, how to have great triumphs in life. And so let me show you four, four key components, four key elements, four key truths that, that you and I need to have great triumphs in life. The first one is vision. Because nothing happens without vision. Vision is the driving force of future accomplishments. Can I say that again? Vision is the driving force of future accomplishments. In other words, my friends, you first have to see it in here before you have it out here. You, you've got to, you've got, you first have to see it before you can achieve it. Vision, my friends, is the driving force for future accomplishments. The men and women who helped take man to the moon started with a vision. They, they saw something that had never been done before, and they got a vision for a future accomplishment, and they went to work to make it happen. When God delivered the people of Israel out of Egypt, you know what he told, you know what he did for them? He gave them a vision. He gave them a vision, uh, no longer a vision where they were slaves, but he gave them a vision of a future accomplishment. He gave them a vision of their future. He says, the vision that I have for you is I'm taking you, I'm taking you to the promised land where you are going to strive and thrive as a people of God. He gave them a vision to pursue. God wants us to have a vision. See, without a vision of the promised land, they would have never arrived at the promised land. The reason man landed on the moon is because somebody got a vision for it. Vision is the driving force for future accomplishments. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says this, where there is no vision, what happens? People perish. In other words, where, where we don't have a, a, a goal, when we don't have a target, when we don't have a vision in front of us, we tend to wander in life. But when you get that vision in front of you, it gives you direction, it guides you, and, and God is about vision. So let me ask you a couple questions. What do you envision for your life? What do you envision for your family? What do you envision for your business? Do you know that as Christ followers, God has given us a vision to pursue. He has given, a vi he's given us a target, a vision to chase after as Christ followers. 
Not, not just pastors, not just church leaders, not just worship leaders. He's called all Christ followers. He's given all Christ followers a vision. Let me tell you something. If you don't have a vision for your life today, let me tell you, I'm about to give it to you. Because Jesus gave you a vision. And watch this. This is what I've learned. If you get to work on the vision that God has called you to, he will give you a vision for your life. This is God's vision for us. Just like the men who worked together to take the first man to the moon, Jesus gave Christ followers a vision. It's found in Matthew chapter 29, verse 18 and 19. Now listen to what the vision that Christ gave us. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You know, last week, we had seven people take the step of baptism here at DTC Church. We celebrate with them. We celebrate this next step in their journey. But it is also the accomplishment of the vision that God has given us. Before Jesus went to heaven, he gathered the disciples and he said, listen, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a vision and this is what I want you to go to work on. I want you to go. I want you to share the good news of Christ with all people from all nations all over the world. He says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then teach them. Help them to become my disciples, my followers. And then teach them everything that I have commanded you. Teach them my word. And so, great triumphs require, first thing is you require a vision. A vision of where you're going, a vision of the future. And this is a vision that God has given us. Each one of us, that's a Christ follower. Can I tell you that if you get busy chasing after this vision, I'm telling you, God will cause you to be exactly where you need to be tomorrow. Here's the, here, here's the next component to great triumphs is sacrifice. In, in the movie First Man, we see that it took them almost an entire decade to finally get the first man to the moon. Along the way, Neil Armstrong, his family, his wife, his kids, and many other people made big sacrifices to get man to the moon. Do you know that along the way, several astronauts died on test flights and, 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 and working to try to put the first man on the moon? There was a lot of sacrifices that happened behind the scenes that we don't often see. And so take a look at, at this next short clip as we see part of the journey that these men took to get to the moon. Take a look. I, I love that scene because as he, he just has this, this difficult circumstance that he's faced, and, and they failed in this particular test, and, and he's on the ground, he's beat up, he's, he's hurting, but he looks up at the moon, and he looks up the vision that he's chasing. And he knows that the sacrifices that, that, that he's making, he needs to make. They need to make if they're going to get to the moon. And sometimes when you and I are down, when we're making big sacrifices to achieve something significant, to live the, the plan that God has called us to live, to continue to follow the Lord when, when we're, we're experiencing all kinds of uh, opposition and hardship and problems, we need to remind ourselves that the sacrifices that we're making will eventually get us to where we're trying to go. <laughs> great triumphs require great sacrifices. Do you know that the early followers of Christ made tremendous sacrifices to establish the church that you and I are a part of today? Many of those, few, those, those early believers lost their lives as martyrs for the cause of Christ. And many of them willingly gave their life so that the, the good news, so that the vision that Christ had given them would continue to move forward, not only to their families, but to generations after them. One of the first heroes of the church, Paul, went through many challenging times in order to carry out God's vision. Listen to, to the way Paul describes some of his journey in Acts chapter 20. He says, and now 
He says, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. What task is that? What vision is he chasing after? The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. What is that, my friends? That is sacrifice and commitment. Paul was committed to, what he, to do what he needed to do to fulfill God's vision and make a difference and bear fruit that would last. And God has called, God has called you and he's called me to live like this. He's called us to live not just for ourselves, not just for me and my four, but to live for others, to live for the vision that Jesus has given us. He has called us to, to sacrifice for it and then to keep our eyes on the moon, to keep our eyes when we get discouraged by the sacrifices that we're making. Because we look at other people that maybe are not making the same sacrifices we need to not look at those people, but we need to keep our eyes on the moon. We need to keep our eyes on the vision. We need to keep our eyes on the God who called us to do it. Remember, it was God who chose you. It was God who appointed you. Not man, not another person, but God. And so we keep our eyes on him to continue to do what he's called us to do. You have heard me say that, that, that as a church, you know, we, we don't have to build a new building. We don't have to. We, we could stay where we are. This is working out. But we're, we want to, and we're willing to make the necessary sacrifices because we know that it's not about our comfort. It's about what Jesus wants to accomplish, and it's about the people that Jesus wants to reach. And that's why we make those sacrifices. I remember uh, reading a pastor years ago. And, uh, well, you, you're familiar with who he is. You know, he wrote The Purpose Driven Life and uh, Rick Warren. And, and um, he, you know, when he grew, his church grew to about 300 members, you know. He was living in California. And he said, you know what, this is, this is good enough. He says, I, I could stay here. He says, you know, if I, you know, I get a 300 member, have a 300 member congregation, he says, you know, that's just enough for me to care and for the people and stretch myself. And, and I, have, I have enough time to go golf and go with my friends and do all these different things. And, and he says, this is enough for the people. It's enough for me. It's enough for the people. And, and he said, he sat and he contemplated that is, you know, this is okay. But then he thought about God's vision. He thought about what Christ had called him to do. He, he thought about the sacrifices that the, that the early believers made so that he could be a believer. And he said, no, I can't stay here. We got to keep pushing. We got to keep working. Got to keep sacrificing so that more people can encounter Jesus. And that's the attitude that this church has. And that's the attitude that we have to have. We want to, have, we want to bear fruit. And the way we can, one of the ways we can do that is to be a part of fulfilling Christ's vision for the world. Here's the third requirement to achieve great things is faith. You have to believe that all things are possible and that God is with you. You have to, you have, to have faith that you are serving someone higher than yourself. Do you know the people who, who, who worked to, to put man, the first man, the first man on the moon, they believed that, that all things were possible or they wouldn't have tried it. They would have looked at the moon like the previous generations did and said, well, that's, wow, well, man will never get to the moon. But they believed that it was possible. And that belief drove them to chase after that. And they believed that they were not only serving themselves, but they believed that they were serving a higher purpose. That the impact of that achievement was going to not only impact the United States, 
but he was going to make a significant impact on the world. And that's why Neil Armstrong's first words when he landed on the moon were one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. If man could do something that was unthinkable for centuries by stepping on the moon, then truly nothing is possible. God has called us to to have faith. When Jesus gave us the vision to fulfill this, this, this mandate, this command to reach the world, he said, and know this, he says, and know that I will be with you to the very end of the age. In other words, you're not going to be alone. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be right there with you. Sounds very familiar. It sounds very similar to what God told Joshua when he led the people of Israel into the promised land. You remember what he told Joshua in, in chapter 1? He said to him, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We have to believe that God is with us wherever we go. We have to have faith that with God all things are possible. We have to have faith that even though it it looks impossible, we serve a God that can make a way even when it looks like there is no way. In the same way, we can be the kind of people that, that, have, that, that are courageous, that, that don't give in to fear. Fear is real, my friends, but faith is stronger. Fear is real, but God can give us the courage that we need to overcome that fear. And so wherever life takes you, my friends, have faith that you're not alone, that God is with you. And finally, here's the fourth requirement to for great triumphs is, is teamwork. You know why it's teamwork, my friends? Because no one who has ever done anything great did it alone. No one who has ever done anything great did it alone. Even, even when you look at athletes and you say, wow, man, that guy's got a lot of talent. Yeah, but somebody coached him. Somebody helped him. Somebody took him to practice. Somebody helped him to become who he is. You know, you, you, know, you think about Michael Jordan, one of the, the greatest basketball players ever. He never won a championship until he realized and recognized that he needed his teammates to be able to win a championship. It was only until he recognized that that they became champions. Neil Armstrong didn't get to the moon alone. There was a team of engineers and doctors and builders and scientists and mathematicians and contractors that worked together to accomplish something great that outlasted their lives. And it's the same with us. Great triumphs are never achieved by one person. It takes a team effort. I I, I love what Mother Teresa said. She said, I can do things you cannot. You can do things I cannot. And together, we can do great things. In other words, we are stronger together. Can I tell you something, my friends? You need some people around you to go where God is taking you. You will not get there alone. I want you to reflect on that. Think about that. You need the people around you to get where God is taking you. You will not get there alone. And do you know that, that, that as a church, that's, that's what we are. God has said that, he said that we, are the, we are the body of Christ. The church is not a building. The church is the body. It's the people of God. He says when they're united, when they're together, he says the church is stronger. For the last 2,000 years, since Christ gave us his vision for mankind to reach the world With the message of good news, people like you and me have been working together to bring it to fulfillment. That's how it has happened. Do you know that today you and I have a relationship with Jesus because men and women from the past sacrificed, worked together so that the message of Christ could reach us here in the Rio Grande Valley in the 21st century. 
That's how we are here. That's how we have an opportunity to know Jesus because somebody made sacrifices yesterday to get the message to us today. Great triumphs require great sacrifice. And so right now, you and I are following in the footsteps of those that have gone before us. And we are now carrying that mantle. We are now carrying that calling that God has given us, that higher purpose to go and, 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 and spread the good news of Christ so that more people can come to know him, so the more families can get saved, so the more young people can turn away from suicidal thoughts and enter into this destiny that God has for them. God says, you didn't choose him. He chose you. And he didn't just choose you to take up space. No, no, no. He appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Let, let, let me close with this thought. Putting the first man on the moon was a great accomplishment for mankind. But an even greater achievement is winning more people to Jesus before he returns. This is the kind of fruit that will last not only in this life, but it will last into eternity. Come on, how many of y'all received that with me today? Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, that, that you found us. Thank you that, that you've set us apart that you've chosen us, that you have appointed us, that you have called us to, leave, to live lives of significance, Father God. You've given us a vision to carry out, Lord, a vision to, to spread the grace of God, to spread the good news of Christ all across this Rio Grande Valley and across the world. And so I pray for all of us here today that you would help us to bear fruit, to bear fruit by, by loving others. Help us to love the people around us. Help us to love strangers. Help us to love our community. Help us to love the world, Lord. Help us to love enough to be able to sacrifice for them just like others have sacrificed for us. Lord, help us to be the kind of people that bear fruit that will last forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Amen. Listen, we don't close, as you know, without giving everyone that opportunity to come to faith in Christ, you know, because I know there might be some of you here today who, you know, you don't know who Christ is. You, you, you haven't received him as your Savior and Lord. Jesus came so that you and I might be forgiven of our sins. So when we, we might enter into a relationship with God and so that we might be a part of what God is doing in this world, that we might be a part of his vision. But it all begins with a, with a step of faith on our part. Jesus has already done the work. He went and he died on the cross for your sins and my sins. He paid the penalty that needed to be paid. Oh, what we have to do today is we have to recognize that we need him. We have to recognize that we have sinned against him and we have to receive what he came to give us. And so right where you are, just close your eyes and bow your heads with me for a second. If that's you here today, you want to receive God's forgiveness for your sins, you want to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, right where you're at, as a sign of faith to him, just lift up your hand to the Lord all across the room, all across the room, all across the room. God bless you, God bless you, my friend. God bless you, God sees you, God sees you. You can put your hands down, amen. Now let's, let's pray this prayer of faith together. Say this with me, say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins, and I receive a new beginning. Jesus, today, I commit my life to you. Now help me to follow you and to bear fruit that will last. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, church, give God a good hand clap. Listen, if you have made a decision for Christ today or recently, the scripture says this is a, a new day. This is a new beginning for you. I want to encourage you to keep coming to church. God is up to something good in your life. 
doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. There's going to be some days that they're going to be hard. There's going to be some resistance that you feel. The enemy doesn't want you to step in to the destiny that God has called you to. And so, yes, you'll feel some resistance. You'll feel some, some, some pull. But listen, if you keep following Christ, if you keep coming to church, if you keep doing what God has called you to do, there are, there's a breaking point in front of you. And God will help you. Because he says he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. He'll be with you every step of the way. And so if you have made a decision for Christ on the back of the seats in front of you, there's a connection card. You could grab that, fill it out, drop that off in the offering bucket in just a little bit. I'm going to send you a free gift to help you in your new commitment with God. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, this is what I'm going to do next as we get ready to wrap up. We always receive our offering uh, after we, re we, we take the invitation. But, but I wanted to just let you guys know as you guys know every christmas season uh for for the last many years we have come together as a church and, and we receive a, a special one-time end of the year uh offering and we call it the christmas offering and and and, it, and it's a gift that that in a sense it's it's an expression of our thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. And so usually in November, I'll talk to you a little bit about it. And then over the next month, you know, I want you to pray about it. See what the Lord will put in your heart. See what you feel compelled to give to the Lord. But there's a special one-time Christmas offering. And this year's Christmas offering is going to go towards our new building that's going to help us to continue to fulfill the vision that Christ has given us of sharing the good news of Christ with thousands of more people. And do you know that last year our Christmas offering was the most successful Christmas offering that we have had thus far? But I believe that we're going to surpass that this year. Come on, how many of you are willing to have faith with me for that? You know, one of, the, one of the commitments that my wife and I have made over the years during our Christmas offering is, you know, when we purchase gifts for family or loved ones, uh, we always, the way we look at it is, you know what, the biggest gift that we're going to give is the gift that we give to Christ. And, and, and so that's been a commitment that we've made is, is whatever the biggest, the most expensive gift that we give, we're going to make the, the biggest one the one that we give to Jesus. Unless my wife asks for a car, then maybe we'll rethink that, but that hasn't happened yet. But, but anyways, but I want you to pray about it. You have these envelopes on the back of the seats in front of you. Uh, if you feel compelled to give today, you can give today. If not, you can give over the next month. Pray about it. Think about it. See what, the, see what you feel in your heart. But, um, but again, it's all going to go so that we can bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so we can continue to fulfill Christ's vision. Amen. And so, ushers, you guys are coming to the front. We're receiving our regular tithing offering here today. And so, so let me just pray for us. Father, again. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us. This Thanksgiving week, Lord God, we are so grateful that we know you. Thank you for our families, our loved ones, our friends, our jobs. Thank you for your goodness, Lord God. Thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. As we give today, we give in response to your goodness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you as you give, church. Hey guys, it's me, Adi. Here's what's up next. It's time for Starting Point. If you're new to DTC or a regular attendee, Starting Point is a great way to get connected and moving forward in your relationship with God. Starting Point is a short 30-minute class happening right here after service every fourth Sunday of the month. We will see you shortly at Starting Point. The last first Wednesday of 2019 is December 4th at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss this incredible time of praise and worship. Thanks again for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can stop by our information center. And don't forget, if you're a first-time guest, Starting Point is happening right after service. See you soon!